If you're still not using the logical editor in Cubase, you're really missing out. So in this video, I'm going to give you five reasons to use the logical editor. I'm going to give you five logical editor commands that will really speed up your workflow. Let's get started. To begin with, let me show you how you find the logical editor in Cubase because you can find it in two places actually. The first one is under the project menu right here. We go to project logical editor and then we go to setup or apply preset. Setup will give you a full overview of the logical editor and a very detailed view of the command that you're going to run. And the preset is going to give you just the preset selection. So it's a consolidated view of the project logical editor so that you can only see the presets and recall them really fast. Now a different aspect of the logical editor lives under the MIDI menu. It's right here logical editor and in order for this to be activated you have to have a MIDI part selected and then you're gonna see that it's activated and we can now go into setup and start loading different presets. Now, as you can see, these presets are mainly aimed towards MIDI editing. So this is the difference between the project logical editor and the MIDI logical editor. Now, the first logical editor workflow I'm going to give you is from the project logical editor. And this is the open key editor of all MIDI parts inside Cycle. So let's say that you're working on a track and you want to edit some MIDI parts, but you have a huge project with loads and loads of MIDI parts. As you can see right here, I have so many different MIDI parts. It's a bit chaotic. So let's say I want to focus on a specific region. Let's say I want to focus here on my outro. I can set up my cycle range right here. And then I can go to my project logical editor, select open key editor of all MIDI parts inside cycle and check what happens when I hit apply immediately. I get only the part that is right here in my cycle range. If I set my locators right here, for example, and I do exactly the same thing, you will see that the parts that are available in this specific range will appear here in my key editor and the key editor pops up straight away so I can immediately start editing with no distractions. So I can only see the parts that I need and I don't see anything else that's not relevant for this region that I'm working on. This command you can find under editors and here it is. Open key editor of all MIDI parts inside cycle. The next command I'm going to show you, it's extremely useful if you're doing a lot of automation in your projects, especially volume automation, which is something that most people do. And this command you can find under the automation category and it's the decreased volume of selected track by 1 dB inside cycle. So I'm going to select this and let's go to this region right here. I'm going to set up my cycle. And as you can see here, we have lots of automation, lots of complicated automation. But if we wanted to raise this by 1 dB or 2 dBs or 3 dBs, this would be quite challenging. I would have to select all of the points and then try very precisely to do this. It's going to be really, really hard. Where here, what I can do is I can select this command. And now when I hit apply, you will see that I don't have to select anything. I can just hit apply and the entire automation is going to be decreased by 1 dB. Check it out. And now you might ask, okay, but what if I want to raise the level by 1 dB or 2 dBs? Let me show you how you do this. It's very easy to modify these commands in the logical editor. So as you can see here, we don't need to worry about this part because this is already set up by the preset. But what we can do is we can go to the transform actions and you see here it says trim decrement volume in dB. So that means that it's going to decrease the level by 1 dB. But if we say increment, I can say, okay, I actually want this to be by 2 dBs. And now when I change this and I hit apply, see what happens? My fader jumps up actually. So now I'm increasing the entire automation by 2 dBs. And this you can of course save as a preset. So if I go for 1 dB, I can just save this as a preset and I can call it increase volume of selected track. 
and now it will appear in my user presets. See, increase volume of selected track by 1 dB inside cycle. Really useful command that will save you tons of time when you're working with volume automation. The third command is really useful because it allows you to randomize the velocity of any MIDI part. And this will allow you to give variation to your parts, interest, so that they're not repetitive. So as you can see here, I have this hi-hat pattern. which is okay, but it's really repetitive. So if I wanted to add some variation to this, let me show you how you do it. You go to the MIDI menu, and then we go to Logical Editor, and let's go to Setup so we can see how the command works as well. And here we're going to jump to the Preset menu, Factory Presets, Notes Velocity, and then we're going to select Randomize Velocity Relatively, minus 10 to 10. So what I can do now is if I hit Apply, you will see that this velocity of these hi-hats is getting randomized. So now, and I can keep hitting apply, and now we have a randomized velocity for all these notes. Now the great thing is, again, I can modify this specific recipe. So I can say, instead of minus 10 to plus 10, I can go minus 30 to plus 30. And now you're going to see that this is going to be even more amplified. All these things that I show you, by the way, you can trigger them by using key commands. Let me show you very quickly how you set it up because this is very important. So let's say I want to assign a key command to this logical editor randomization for the velocity that I just showed you. Let me show you how you do this. You go to edit, we go to key commands, and then what I need to do is try and find this logical editor preset in my key commands list. So I'm going to start typing randomize, and there we go. Here it is, randomize velocity relatively minus 10 to 10. And now I can assign a key to this. For example, I'm going to assign control R on my system. Now all I need to do is hit this shortcut, and now I can randomize the velocities without even opening the logical editor panel. The next recipe I'm going to show you is very useful if you're working with MIDI parts that have loads of CC data. So let's say you're a film composer and you're working with MIDI parts that have lots of modulation data like uh, modulation wheel, aftertouch, uh, CC11, CC1, all these things and you want to start with a clean state. For example, right here, as you can see, I have a CC1 modulation, I have the breath controller, and I have the expression. Now, if I wanted to delete all of this, it would be a little bit of work. So I would have to select uh, all of them and start you know, deleting them, and then I might forget something. The logical editor has a really fast way to do this. So this is, again, the MIDI logical editor, and what you want to do is you want to go to your earlier presets, and you want to select delete all controllers in cycle range. So this is going to delete all the controllers that we have here, all the CC controllers in the cycle range. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit apply, and check what happens to these controllers here. Boom, straight away they disappear. So I'm going to undo right now. And if you don't have this specific logical editor command, let me show you how you build this. As you can see, the first thing you need to add is type is equal controller and position is inside cycle. And we're going to set the bar range to PPQ. And then we're going to close the brackets. So let's do this from scratch, insert, type is equal controller, and then we're going to go here and we're going to add insert and position inside cycle, PPQ, the action is going to be delete and hit apply and there we go. Equally, you can do the same thing by setting your condition to before cursor or beyond cursor or outside cycle. So you can really customize these commands to your liking and to your needs. And the last logical editor command that I'm going to show you is all about renaming your channels. And this is going to be extremely useful if you're mixing client projects or if you want to export your channels to deliver to somebody else. So let me show you how this works. Let's say I want to get 
get my synths right here and I want to rename them all so that the name of every channel starts with synth. So what I can do is I can go to project, logical editor, I'm going to go to setup and I'm going to choose factory presets, naming, and now I can, for example, add date to selected MIDI and audio track names. So if I click on this, you will see that once I hit this, I'm going to be able to add the date to this at the end of the track. So I know exactly when this export was performed. Or I can use one of these commands. So prepend drums to all track names in selected folder. So I can click on this, but instead of drums, maybe I can change this to synths. And I'm going to select the folder, hit apply, and there you go. Now all the track names start with synths. Now if I don't want this to apply to the folder, but maybe on the selected tracks, I can just select the tracks. And now I can change this parameter here from parent object is selected to is selected. And now it's going to apply this renaming scheme to the selected channels. Done. And one last aspect of this renaming editor commands in the project logical editor is when you want to remove characters from the channel names. Imagine you have a client that has sent you a mix and all the channels start with mix one or the name of the song. You don't want this to be at the beginning of every channel. You want to have drums, kick, bass, stuff like this. You don't want to have song name, song name, song name on all the channels. In this case, what you can do is you can use this command, erase and character on selected tracks. So for example, right here, as you can see, I have mix one, mix one, mix one. This doesn't tell me anything. And then I have the useful information with pad, pad one, key, and so on and so forth. So now what I can do is I can take this key command and I want to show you how to tweak them as well. And I'm going to go erase front character. And now you can see mix one, mix one, mix one. And now what I can do is I can hit apply as many times as I need until this mix one disappears. And now I have the clean channel names so I can start mixing and I know what track I'm working on. You're gonna love this. So there you go. These are only five reasons to make you use the logical editors in Cubase. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it saves you loads of time. It makes you more productive and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.